Hello, my name is Carlos and I am addicted. First time when I noticed my addiction was when I sat by the piano at the age of six. Without any knowledge or notes, I just let myself go. The composition was both flowing and very impulsive. Overwhelmed by the creative process, I was delighted. My sister was shouting, stop it, it sounds horrible, you don't know how to play. My grandma, however, told her to stop interrupting me as I was composing. I had no idea what composing meant, but the composing was really cool. I felt very similar when I was in mountains 14 years later. First, the creative process in my childhood was true to the bone. And after spending two weeks in the middle of adventure, everyone of our group became just as true. Second, if you wanted to climb a new route, you have to improvise without any instructions or descriptions. I had some adventure improvisations before, with Nordic skates, with ice axes and crampons, with skis, with bicycles. As the years passed, my addiction had become worse. When I sat at the place where the road meets the vastness of an ocean, I was wondering, is the end of the road also the end of the adventure? I sat at the shore until I started to see a new road which stretched between the waves. That was the road that I was about to follow. Just like that, a new addiction was born. We wanted to cross the South Atlantic Ocean by the new road, rowing 6,000 kilometers in an ocean rowing boat, without the sails, without the motor, and without the support vessel, from Namibia to Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. My first Alpine instructor said, write a diary, because you won't be able to recall things later. Well, he taught me many important things, but this wasn't one of them. I knew it, I would remember everything what is worth remembering. Early tears blended with salty coastal water. The tears were not mine, but Gint's, my rowing partner's. We had just left the harbor, and he started to cry a bit shy tears of joy. And then he laughed and said, Yeah, man, thanks for this bright idea. Thank you for being here. I had known Gint's for eight years. And already then, I knew that Gins had experienced a lot. He was a journalist. He had worked as a news editor, a business consulting instructor. He had been a manager of several companies. He had two grown-up sons. However, I had never ever seen Gins crying. Our minds were still polluted with the thoughts of dry land. We couldn't believe that the seal didn't want anything from us. Suddenly, it dived into depth head first, leaving just his hind flippers above the water. <laughs> Slowly moving them in all directions, it reminded us of a strange dance. The seal was just enjoying itself. During the night, we could observe its dancing around the boat. As soon as it moved just a couple of meters below the water, the water immediately shone with the countless bluish lights. Those were algae making the seal's tail look much longer. Observing the seal, who was just enjoying being in his natural environment, was so easy and natural that we even forgot to take a picture of it. <laughs> as far as the eye can see, there is only pulsing desert of water. Then it gets dark, and a couple of hours later, orange moon rises about the black horizon. As it gets higher, it rolls out the carpet of silver light. The light gently touches the boat and shows us the way like compass. We were rowing in two-hour shifts. One rows for two hours, then rests for two hours. And this goes on for 24 hours a day. What new or different can be found in such a perfect adjusted uh, routine? Well, remember, if you want to row, you have to row while sitting on the rowing seat. But for the third week, I couldn't sit down at all. 
Antibiotics weren't helping to deal with the serious health problems caused by the lack of vitamins and, and fresh food. We had gone one-third of our way, and doctors recommended us to evacuate ourselves. We were supposed to come up with something else. Anyone who has ever rowed a boat knows how naive the idea to row while standing is. <laughs> naive, yet it was the only solution we could come up with. Two strokes forward, one backwards. But slowly and patiently, we learned a new technique. What is the feeling when your naive solution works? <laughs> your alarm rings. It's two o'clock in the night. The coziness of a small cabin surrounds you with a delicate warm. You can hear approaching waves from afar. It starts up like a drag race car. And BAM! And it crashes into six millimeters playwood wall that separates you from the ocean. Refreshed by the two hours of sleep, I even manage to dry my clothes. And it looks like I'm hesitating to change the completely soaked gins. <laughs> no, the real fun is about to begin. I switch on the right frequency. Someone might call it a barrier, a shield, or something like that, but I don't have a time to think. I just open the hatch and jump out, once again arriving in my fun mode, in my fun channel. <laughs> Gins was saying something, but 90% of the words were taken by the wind. I shut the cabin door from outside and got myself quickly in a rowing position. I tried to focus. I tried to see something in the dark. Where should I be rowing now? I could see absolutely nothing. I was closely watching the dark. On the left, I was holding onto the railing. Suddenly, six buckets of refreshing salt water in my face. Yeah! Thank you, wave! Thank you, ocean! Attention, attention, Jaladi. This is rowing boat Linda. Rowing boat Linda. Do you hear us? That is how seven meters long boat starts a chat with a 330 meters long tanker. <laughs> Immediately, it agreed to be stopped in the middle of ocean. The crew didn't care about losing time or any other potential losses. The seamen were ready to share everything. Give us a full list, guys! Don't be shy! The most important things were vitamins and, and fresh food. But we were also been dreaming of cheese sandwiches for a month. <laughs> and without any reference to superficial and supernatural and, and Hollywood cliche, dreams do come true only if you wish them strong enough. Well, I can honestly say dreams literally came true in front of our eyes. The seamen were lowering Christmas gifts into our boat in the middle of July. Can you imagine stopping a fuel truck driver to ask him for a plaster? But he also offers his dinner, too. <laughs> On dry land, my brain filters countless gigabytes of information. Videos, photos, fake news, real truth, some bullshit. But here in the ocean, I got one text message per day. Sometimes one every two days. 160 signs from outside world. Those were messages from home, messages from my loved ones. I remember rereading every word tens of times. I imagine hearing every word in person. My inner radar had freed itself from all the useless gigabytes, and these small, truthful sincerities touched the horizon of my heart. The slowest way to Rio had completely justified its name. Instead of 100 nights, it was the night 140. 8,000 kilometers behind us. But it doesn't matter. We have 20 kilometers to the shore and we can't reach it. The boils keep coming back all over our bodies. Gins has broken his ribs two weeks ago. 
upstream, headwinds. Even when two of us are rowing together, we've been throwing further and further back into the ocean. We've been months too late for the Olympics. <laughs> A week too late for Paralympics. <laughs> and just the very core idea of our goal was to row without an engine and sails. I want to go ashore, Carlos. I really want to go ashore. Please, mate, let's just try for one more day. I switch off the navigation monitor so I no longer have to see at what speed we are drifting away from the coast. <sighs> Meanwhile, Gins was praying for a miracle. We waited in silence. I was trying to get rid of the tension. If it's not meant to happen, it's not going to happen. And I, and I let go of something inside of me and felt relieved. And two hours later, the stream took both to the north, then to the northwest. And by the evening of the next day, I can still see a thousand questions in some faces in the audience. What about sharks? What about whales? How did you eat? How did you charge your batteries? Well, you can ask all those questions to Google, just as we did before this adventure. <laughs> the most important thing what I wanted to tell you is what I believe in. I believe in true tears. I believe in true joy. I believe in true humanity. And I still believe in true miracles. My diagnosis is simple. And luckily, it's for life. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to freedom. Do you think you're not addicted? Thank you. <laughs> 